<laughs> and joining me today is Paige Sabidra. Yes. What's hey. the one like thing from SNL? The oh, what was that? Um, Super superstar. Thanks very much. Superstar. Yeah, superstar. That's a, we'll do that too. <laughs> See, you don't do this with your bourbon. <laughs> I don't. I don't froth my bourbon. <laughs> yeah. I had a posing coach and I had a personal trainer, and that's how I got ready for my first bodybuilding show. So you kept getting outsized mm -hmm. for three shows. What decision did you make, Paige? <laughs> I decided to go to the dark side, you know, got to use a little bit of drugs and stuff and okay. play the game. Stress management stresses me out. <laughs> Look. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Bodybuilding so. isn't supposed to be comfortable. It's just not. No. You look amazing. But you feel like death. Yes. What are some negative side effects that you've seen with steroid use? So for those of you scrolling through social media and seeing all these beautiful bodies that you want to look like, understand they don't look like that every single day of their life. No. Well, I got into an MRI before Christmas and that was where they could see that it was a stroke. All right, girl, you ready to go? Let's go. All right. Welcome to the Barbells and Bourbon Podcast, the podcast that allows real people to tell real stories. I am your big, bald, bearded, barbell lift and bourbon drinking son of a bitch, Sean. <laughs> and joining me today is Paige Sabidra. Yes. I actually pronounced your name wrong for the last like three years. And I'm glad I asked you how to pronounce your it's name okay. right. <laughs> Many last names. <laughs> um, welcome to our home, Paige. Thanks. A pleasure to have you. Um, where are you from? So I'm originally from New Alexandria. Which, um, for the non-Pittsburghers, where is that? That's so, east? Yeah, I would say about a good 45 minutes east of the city. Mm -hmm. So, uh, kind of not in the middle of nowhere, but kind of is, I don't know, quiet. Yes, it is much more quiet out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Where do you live now? So, I'm actually living back in New Alexandria. I've kind of lived all over, okay. but I'm back, back home. Ooh, what took you back home? So I was living alone for four years, which we'll get into my whole like fitness journey. It mm -hmm. was great for that. Uh, but, you know, grandma opened up a room and I kind of <laughs> took advantage of it and was just like, you know what? I'm tired of living alone. I'm going to go live with grandma and help her out. Yeah, I was going to say, you could probably help her out too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, that's awesome. I'm sure she enjoys your company. She does. Yeah. Pap's not, he's getting old too. So, you know, it's kind of nice that she don't feel so lonely instead of, you know, talking to the wall because he doesn't always like to wear his ears. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to just shut down. Yeah. He likes to nap out. and he doesn't like disturbance with his naps. It's so just, you just take your ears off. It's okay. And you're probably <laughs> learning a lot about how Pap ticks now that you're living with him, right? Oh, sometimes, sometimes when she's gone too long out of the house, he gets perturbed. So I'm just oh, like, geez. ooh. <laughs> well, it was a long trip for you to get here. You must be thirsty. You already told me that you don't drink alcohol. I don't, not anymore. And any specific reason why? Honestly, when you are deep, deep, deep into fitness and you get into, you know, improving your body, you know, I don't really get to eat off plan very much. And, mm -hmm. uh, calories are also in beverages yeah. i'd rather eat my calories so i've just gotten used to not drinking <laughs> and i i assumed that was going to be your answer but yeah. i had to ask some people they have you know personal emotional reasons why they don't drink mm -hmm. but i had a feeling yours was fitness based and we're gonna <laughs> yeah. like you said we're gonna dive deep into fitness oh, because yeah. that's pretty much your life Right it now. is yes and don't get me wrong i understand Al alcoholic beverages are pretty tasty you know <laughs> i do miss a good pina colada but <laughs> yeah well i collect and enjoy um it's a passion of mine i like to share my passion with others who are willing to partake with me but it's not a requirement luckily the fine folks at project one nutrition sent me some supplements that i can share with those who do not want to drink alcohol and I'd like to share one with you. There is a thermogenic called Embrax. If you want to sweat during this podcast, I might want to. <laughs> There's a stim-free pre-workout called, called Ampnox. If you want your face to itch during the whole mm. podcast, <laughs> or there's Aminos, BCAs, and EAs. If you just want Ooh. some hydration and it's a hard supplementation, choice. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know why I just want to sweat. <laughs> 
I didn't get that a sweat today. That would be really funny. <laughs> Except you listen to like, some aminos. See, like the wet, like pit bark showing oh, yeah, up I'm halfway through. Oh, yeah, Like, hey, what's hey. the one like thing from SNL? The oh, what was that? Um, Super? Superstar. Yeah, Superstar. <laughs> That's a, we'll do that too. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, if you if you want to mix them, whatever you want, Paige. This is let's, this is your choice. Let's just let's keep it safe and do the aminos. <laughs> that's probably that's yeah. probably a good idea. <laughs> Speaking of which, they'll be uh, at the uh, fitness expo that's going on in Monroeville. Project it's, One. Yeah, April 20th and 21st. I tell you what, they are blowing up. Yeah. With their collabs. They have a collab coming, and I'm mm -hmm. not going to spoil it mm -hmm. because they haven't made it public yet, but I know about it because I'm on their squad. Yeah. It's going to shake the fitness industry. Ooh. It's crazy. Yeah. So, get Suspense. ready for it. Suspense. I think they're announcing it April 1st. Okay. Well, that'll be... It's coming soon. Well, when this comes out today. Yeah. So, yeah, this episode is actually filmed a week early, but yeah. Yeah. So, don't overfill this. Right. I learned the hard way. Bartender right here. Yeah. <clears throat> Once right I get my little, little more. my little mixer thing going. Has, oh, yeah. It's turbo powered that. and it... Tends to overflow. Yeah, don't go too crazy. See, you don't do this with your bourbon. <laughs> I don't. I don't froth my bourbon. <laughs> yeah. You don't give handies hey, to your the maybe guests I like this. Try. Maybe you're onto something. <laughs> you could. What don't th do they add? Um, like that cherry stuff in with bourbon? Yeah, Can they there's do that? um. Syrups what do they call that? That's it. Bitters yeah. and. The only problem about doing this on this episode, on the episodes, is it gets picked up by the microphones, oh, and bet. the people who are only listening are probably like really annoyed by it. Yeah, but too bad. Sorry, too we're bad. making some cocktails here. All right, Paige. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, John. Thanks Let's for coming. Go. Woo. I like the froth. Yeah. That was a little. That was a nice little treat <laughs> has like a an alcohol look to it i know it does looks like a, like a beer Almost, yeah like a white russian of some yeah, sort it does. and those are good we can pretend look, it's coordinated with your outfit it's yellow thanks i like it <laughs> and the lights all right Paige. let's dive into your life okay. um i've known you for a little while yeah um more say about three years more like a business relationship yes. Mm -hmm. I don't really know much about you other than <laughs> what you post on, so on social media. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to learn what, what like the inner workings of Paige are in your childhood and mm -hmm. what got you into fitness and all that good stuff. So where to begin flashback as far as you want to go Ooh. and let's start kind of building Paige's okay. story. Well, uh, with fitness, you know, I guess the, the first question I would typically get is what sports did you play? And to be honest, when I was in middle school and high school, it was just very bare minimum. I did a little bit of soccer in middle school, and that was only so that I would fit in with the popular girls. Okay. So, you know, it was just me very new to sports, me getting into it, got a little aggression in there. <laughs> I thought soccer was a lot of fun. I really did. Yeah. But I quit whenever I went to high school only because I wanted to try a new sport, and I just wasn't the type to do more than one, like some crazy children. <laughs> You do multiple and drive their parents crazy because they yeah. have to be in three places at one time. Right. I picked one. But I digress. <laughs> I figured. That's why. <laughs> so you said you joined soccer yeah. to fit in yeah. with the popular kids. Mm -hmm. Were you not popular? Oh, I'm always the weird kid. Yeah. I will always forever be the weird kid. Uh, Define so weird yeah. kid. I'm like super into anime. I'm just like an outgoing type of girl. You know, I didn't, you know. Really, uh, I wasn't in like the smart classes either, right? So I'm in like the the sped we would call it, <laughs> okay. you know, the the learning support kids. So okay. uh, it was more along the lines of like I just wanted to be with like the pretty popular girls a little bit and get to like really learn how to get in with that. So would you define yourself as eccentric? Um, as in just like colorful. <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah i would say i'm a little different in that so, way so you're unique you did you yeah. march to the beat of your own drum yes okay. yeah for sure so what made you want to fit in did you feel like that was just what you yeah. should be doing yeah did you did so. you feel like you 
were kind of out of place? Like you had trouble making friends because you were different? I definitely had friends. It's just that they were not in that crowd. And I guess I was very intrigued to know, okay, well, these like pretty, like, you know, you watch like Barbie movies mm-hmm. and stuff or play mean with girls. Barbies. Yeah, Mean Girls. You you watch like you see like what this persona is of pretty and popular. And it seems like a different lifestyle. Right. Yeah. And then like I remember, I mean, not that I'm easily persuaded, but I guess it will sound like it. But I remember I used to just always wear dresses as a girl like growing up. Mm-hmm. And then the popular girls were wearing jeans. And I was always like, I ain't wearing jeans. And then when they said that's all they wore and they never wore dresses and I was doing the opposite, you know how it goes with kids, you know, yes. you kind of do the peer pressure thing. And I started wearing jeans only because the popular girls were. And kids are mean. Yeah. If you're not fitting in, mm-hmm. they're going to attack you, mm-hmm. which is a shame. Mm-hmm. But um, did you yeah. get picked on? Did you get bullied or? Not really. That's good. Honestly, growing up, uh, my friends were the ones that got bullied. And I was more of the weird kid that stood up for them. So if uh, that could tell you where I was in this group, okay. I eventually, not that I was mean, but I definitely would uh, make a few comments so that the, the mean people would You're go away. You're the protector. I was. Good. Yeah. So played soccer. What other sports did you dabble uh, in? So when I got to high school, I <laughs> played tennis. I wanted to wear the mini skirts. <laughs> So you were a girly girl. I was, like yeah. Heart. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I'm into anime. So I was just like, oh, schoolgirl skirts. That's what tennis girl skirts look like. So that's as close to okay. anime school girls so I could get. It's making sense now. Yeah. How did tennis go? Did you enjoy it? Did you play long? Ooh, so I loved tennis, but I wasn't good at it. And I tried so hard to get my coach to notice me. So I was always at practice early. I was always, you know, practicing my serving by myself. Um, And I just couldn't quite get good enough to play for the varsity team. So I was kind of like the bench girl. But man, did I try so hard to be really good at it. It didn't work out. So you were disciplined and motivated, Mm -hmm. which probably pays off as you move through your journey. (laughs) Yes. Um, So tennis doesn't work out. No. What do you do after high school? So after high school, I'm an art kid. Again, I'm weird. So uh, at art school, they don't have college sports because it's art school. Yeah. We are just uh, doing art stuff. You're there to learn. Yeah. So um, I really didn't do much of anything uh, of that sort. So my entire college uh, three years, you could say, I did the full maximum that I could to get my bachelor's degree. So... My only form of exercise was walking to school, which was an hour there and back. What school did you go to? The Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Okay. So I was living on Mount Washington. So if you're in Pittsburgh, that literally is like the high point. You can kind of walk into the city, walk over a bridge. And uh, I was like right in downtown Pittsburgh. So you were living the city life. Yes. What did you think of that? I know it's not New Alexandria. No, I loved it. Which is more rural, right? Mm -hmm. No. And I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm just... Not really much of a small town girl, definitely more of a city type of girl, Mm -hmm. being that I didn't live in a city. But, um, yeah, I kind of grew accustomed accustomed to that. I made a lot of friends, and we were always hanging out. We were always doing – I love doing things. I like going places. I like talking to people. So I like new experiences. So if that kind of gathers what what was going on. Yeah, being in the (laughs) city is good for that. Mm -hmm. Um, What? So what is your degree in? Oh, it is um, – Uh, science of graphic design okay so it's it's really just graphic design to be honest that's all i've ever used it for (laughs) well did you transfer that into an actual career yes so literally right after college i had like maybe like three weeks to enjoy like the post grad transition into big girl job Yeah. yeah so I went to Japan. <laughs> so that as soon as I graduated, a couple of days later, hopped on a plane, took a vacation to Japan with my friend. Anime capital of the world. Again, I'm sorry, I'm a weeb. This is what happens. Is that why you went? Well, I have a friend that's there. So uh, she is Japanese. So I okay. lived with her. She was my exchange student uh, when I was like a young girl. So I uh, went and visited her. And as soon as I got back, I literally was waiting for that like approval paperwork process to go through at my job. And I've I've been there ever since. So wow. I'm definitely at 10 years now. Okay. At my job. So again, that's uh, doing graphic design for grocery stores. So I do all the circulars and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I meant to ask what 
you do yeah. with that. Okay. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. Which is like hamster bedding and junk mail. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Well, people don't like paper anymore. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Paper's annoying now, right? It is. If but, it's not in an email. <laughs> but who wants to like, yeah, you'll look at an email blast from a grocery store. But like, I think more often than not, people still will grab that physical circular in the grocery store if you walk in that's always right at the front door yeah. so i still i'm the one making those now do you get assigned those projects yeah so um obviously i don't do any grocery stores in pennsylvania actually it's funny we do all kinds all over the united states but none in pennsylvania um but i have a few select stores and um yeah i'm in a like my company, we've got a whole bunch of them, right? And we're based out of Atlanta, so it's not just a Pittsburgh okay. company. It's actually Atlanta, and we've got a few other uh, companies. It's called Pure Red, um, and we do all kinds of marketing services, but I specialize in the grocery store advertising, so my clients are all, you know, selling your, you know, Easter hams and 12-pack <laughs> Pepsis. I've seen it, and I've done it all. And uh, so, yeah, I am assigned certain grocery stores, so stuff you don't even think about. No. It's like, who designed this circular? Right. And that's what I think too. And it's, I'm like, I literally don't even look at them, right? Like, I'll yeah. like pick up one from like a giant eagle grocery store, pick it up and throw it away. And I'm like, I spent <clears throat> so many hours making that. And somebody did it too. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Do you find yourself critiquing other grocery store circulars <laughs> to see if they compete with yours? <laughs> it's not that I look at them in the competing way. I know my mother does because my mom will look at it and be like, yours is this is better. a terrible font choice. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's what I went to school for. Oh mother. my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> She's like, this is a boring ham. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I. Uh, it's not that I critique it, but I'll be like, man, that's that's a nice ad. I realize that's a nice ad. They, they did a good job. Like, I'll look at it more on that. That's on that so point. funny. Is there a science behind how those circulars are designed? Sort of. With colors and fonts and like drawing attention? Yeah. So you'll see like right now, um, I'm sure you're familiar with Kroger, even yeah. in Pennsylvania, we don't have any Kroger stores. Um, Publix, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stores are looking at those guys and they're like, I want a circular that looks like that or even like Target. Yeah. And then I'll be like, well, they put like five items on the front page. You want 30. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work like that. No, I can't make that look nice when you're trying to, you know, less is right, more. Right. So, uh, yeah. So again, it's it's you were asking more of like if it's, there's a science to it, and it's uh, there is, but there's not because it can be so simple. But grocery stores will just want to sell, 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 sell. Mm -hmm. So they'll think, well, let's keep adding more. And I'm like, no, you want it to be, you know, big pictures, big prices. You know, you don't need all this jam pack it all into one but it is hard because now you're also seeing where grocery stores are trying to cut back what they're spending on their advertising yeah. so then they're going to want to put as much as they can to save paper because they don't want to print multiple pages so that's another dilemma you do any online stuff or is it physical hard copy designs? some of it most of it's hard copy i was doing a couple digital ads which is really just a pdf yeah you know, so it's still just a circular that would be going to a printer yeah, to be printed. It's just uploaded as a file. Right. Yeah. So then you can just go to the weekly circular, weekly ad on the website and click on it. So then it just pops up like that. Um, but my company is doing more with like the digital apps and stuff that you'll see like an Instacart almost. Yeah. Um, but I don't personally do that kind of stuff. Okay. There's a lot more in the back end that I did not go to school for. <laughs> so you work from home, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Which is really convenient. Really nice. Yeah. But... Working from home also has its downside, depending um, on, I guess, your personality type. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I work from home also. Mm -hmm. And if I get out of my chair two or three times a day, I feel lucky. Yes. And I don't interact with people in person very much. Mm -hmm. And I think it does something to you. It makes you feel like you're a prisoner in your own house sometimes. But people are like, oh, you're so lucky you get to work from home. There are benefits. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I don't have to put miles on my car, pay for gas, sit mm -hmm. in traffic and flip people off. Ooh, yeah. I don't have to worry. I can work in my pajamas. <laughs> yes. There are benefits. Oh, okay. Yeah. I understand. But everything has its downsides too, right? When you're trapped in this room mm -hmm. all day, it kind of makes you twitch a little bit <laughs> sometimes. But it's definitely convenient. 
It can be. I listen to podcasts all day. So it's like background music. It'll be like The yeah. Office and you're just listening to yeah. conversations going on. So I will literally listen to fitness podcasts all day. All day. All day. Yeah. Well, that's that benefits you a lot yeah. because we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, I doubt graphic design is your life's passion page. <laughs> what is your life's passion? I mean, I... I'm doing exactly what I went to school for. I was doing graphic design in high school too. So it's just what I was destined to do. It's what I'm good at. And I'm grateful to have a job because even when the pandemic happened and yeah. things were closing down, you know, I'm in grocery store, I'm essential. So I never ended up losing my job at all during that and was able to work from home and didn't have to worry or stress about all that kind of stuff. Right. So yeah. in the way that, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a passion, but I'm also someone that likes to do multiple things. So I've always worked more than one job. Yeah. So I've always, you know, when I was in college, I had, you know, as a student that was full time, I also like worked at the school. Um, and then even now, you know, I do pet sitting, I do posing, uh, and I still work a full time job. And I mean, I'm telling you, if I could, I would do more jobs <laughs> if I had the time. Yeah, you're driven. Yeah. So it's yeah. one of those things where I, I can, there's only one of me, I can only do so much. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I have to like slap myself upside the head and be like, Sean, just stop coming up with ideas on other things that you can do with the little time you have. You sound like you're the same type of person. Yeah. Um, which I admire that because yeah. I, I like the people that are just go-getters and full throttle and don't want to just comply mm -mm. and be mediocre. Mm -mm. If I got time, I'm going to make money. <laughs> I admire that too. Yeah, right. So when you're not... Graphic designing, graphical <laughs> designing. What are you doing, Paige? What am I doing? I am bodybuilding, or I was. Mm -hmm. So got into my fitness stuff. I watch anime. It's like, that's kind of the other things that I do. Let's talk about bodybuilding. Okay. <laughs> because you have excelled pretty yeah. greatly in that sport. What got yes. you into bodybuilding to begin with? Because well, you weren't super athletic yeah. as a kid. Soccer no. and tennis not the most no. physical. I mean, they are physically enduring, but not yeah. like bodybuilding is. You weren't right. a power lifter. You weren't in. I never like, went into a gym. Shot put and like <laughs> those, like you know, bodybuilding yeah. type sports. So, what got you into bodybuilding? Well, I'm glad that we talked about the graphic design because once I got that big girl desk job, uh, you know, your jeans start not fitting because you know you're literally just you know driving to work and then sitting in a cube. And you're doing that for eight hours. Yeah. Uh, and then it's just continuous. So I was like, I better join a gym because now I got big girl money. So, you know, I joined, joined my first gym at LA Fitness. Uh, LA Fitness has personal trainers. Mm -hmm. So I eventually was like, okay, I'm going to invest in one of those because I did want to know what I was doing in there. Like I said, I didn't have any gym experience at all, not even in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the way LA Fitness works is they kind of go through trainers like, no other because mm, frankly they don't pay their trainers enough right yeah. so i um eventually had one that was a competitor and she kind of put it in my ear and she was like hey if you google it you know you can find npc shows or whatever so i found an npc show that was going to happen and kind of was like training for it with her kind of just doing the uh physical trainer part yeah. like i didn't have a diet or anything i didn't you didn't have a true coach right got it yeah yeah so that was, you hadn't thought about competing ever until that trainer kind of like, oh, by the way. Yeah, I didn't know about anything about bodybuilding. Didn't even follow it or know of any other competitors other than obviously the one that got me into it. Her name's Crystal Browning. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, after that, it was just kind of just Google and go. <laughs> so how far <laughs> out was the show that you found from the time that you researched it? Do you have any idea? Um, I'm pretty sure that it was going to happen in like three months because I did not end up doing that show Oh, because in my mind I was like, oh, like this is you know, the first one you find. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I remember it being a November show and I'm assuming this might've been, you know, like April summer, or so. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in the summer. It's not very much time. No. And again, it was like not going to happen, but, uh, you know, eventually what happened was I hired a posing coach. And when I started going to her posing clinics and learning how to pose and I met the other girls, they were all doing a show the following May. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna do what the girls are doing because they're all doing this show in May and then we can kind of do it together and we were all learning to pose. And, um, and then that was a Fitness America show, so it was even a different organization. Um, and then it was here in Monroeville when Monroeville had a fitness expo. Okay. So that's where that show was at. So again, I just I had a posing coach and I had a personal trainer. And that's how I got ready for my first bodybuilding show. That is so crazy, especially when I know where you're at at this point. Exactly. So there's multiple divisions in women's bodybuilding. There's Mm -hmm. figure, there's bikini, there's now wellness. Wellness didn't always exist. Mm -hmm. And there's physique. Yeah. So what was your first division that you competed in? I really wanted to do figure, but uh, assessing my body type at the time, Uh, We decided we were just going to dip my toe in the water and do bikini, which was pretty much as basic as you can get if you're getting into bodybuilding. Um, So that's what I went for was bikini. So I know the answer to the question I'm going to ask, but I want you to answer it. Can Mm -hmm. you briefly describe the differences between each divisions? Oh, for sure. So bikini is kind of like your entry level uh, body type. It's usually a little small. We call it pretty muscle. So you're wearing like a two-piece bikini, kind of like a small little thong thing. And then uh, now that there's wellness, I'll briefly go into wellness. Wellness is the only div- female division that's not balanced at all. So like it's definitely heavy on the bottom. Mm-hmm. So big legs, big glutes yep. with nice round shoulder caps. And then if you move up into figure, that it's more of the X frame. Sometimes I call it a martini glass, an hourglass. It looks more like a martini glass in my opinion. So you're looking for that nice V shape in the back, nice cap shoulders, and a good definition to your quads. Um, and then you can go up to women's physique. Women's physique is where you start to see the females not wearing high heels. And they're still looking for that X frame. But again, it's a little bit more muscle mass and a little bit more conditioned. Okay. More so than the other divisions. Then you're going to get up to female bodybuilding, which is your big girls. Those girls are all about mass, but they also need to be conditioned. Um, And again, those girls might lose a little bit of their X frame, but it's still important. You still want that upper and lower balance. Like I said, wellness, besides wellness, all of the female divisions require some sort of symmetry up and bottom. So hopefully that. So bikini, you said, is kind of like your entry level Mm -hmm. competition division. You have to put work in no matter what division you, oh, you're in. Absolutely. You can't just you know step yeah. on a stage and think that you're going to win a show. Mm-hmm. Um, bikini requires less muscle mass right. and less conditioning than figure and physique, for instance. Yeah. Wellness. So wellness is kind of new to me, too. I don't know mm-hmm. too much about that division. How much conditioning is kind of judged in wellness as far as body fat percentages you definitely like it still is more of a a very lean physique it's just that there's just so much muscle push pushing against the skin Mm -hmm. you will still need to be conditioned but there really is no body fat on those girls they just have so much muscle that it just is people will think that it's fat but it's really just just having so much muscle push against the skin and then just having full round muscle bellies down there. Okay. So it's still very dry. Yes. No water. Yeah. No fat. Okay. Yeah. I thought wellness was more a more muscular bikini. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> just because I think it's like the illusion. Like the girls aren't coming in as dry and hard as like a women's physique competitor. Uh, but, you know, those girls are definitely kind of like coming in super conditioned, it's just all about that carb up. Because even bikini girls will look, like they'll look like figure girls like leading up to the show. They'll be so dry and conditioned, at least at the IFBB pro level. But it's all about that carb up the night before and to soften up. Yeah. So it's almost like filling up the balloon Mm -hmm. just a little bit more than maybe some of the other divisions. Yeah. So you do your first show. Yeah. You did that May show? Yeah, that was 2016. So eight years ago, Mm -hmm. how did you do? Mm, I did okay. So I got, uh, there were eight girls and I got fourth. So I thought that was pretty good. And um, honestly, if I look back at it, I think I was one of the better posers. And I also had a very natural stage presence to myself because I could pose. Um, and I think it just have decent shape. Like I still have a tiny waist. I was nowhere near conditioned because I obviously wasn't doing any sort of true bodybuilding diet yeah. or cardio. So um, I thought I did pretty good. I was hooked after that. 
so you were your own coach in, going into that show? Pretty much. You okay. know, I had some guidance. I Googled some things, yeah. but uh, it was really just opposing coach and a personal trainer. So when did it become so serious that you're like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to get yeah. myself a coach and really try to excel at this sport. How, how much longer after that May show did you make that decision? Wasn't too much longer. I decided uh, a few months after that, that, um, you know, I wanted to get another personal trainer uh, because the one that I had previous left LA Fitness. So I was back at bouncing around and obviously none of them knew anything about bodybuilding competitions now that I had these new goals. And my goal was to have enough muscle sometime to make it to figure. So eventually I, you know, kind of found one of a local bodybuilding coach I kind of was doing it more of like, oh, this person is like has this girl under him and I want to look like her. So I did one of those. Got it. And uh, that is not the way to do things. Uh, it's just so you know, you can't look like like you can have body goals, right? But sure. you can't hire a coach based just like I like how she looks. I want to look like that. Yeah. Never. The There's case. a lot of things that come into play on how you're end up good. You're going to end up looking. Yes. And right. I've had clients come to me with pictures of who they want to look like. And I, you you have to like, I don't want to say let them down nicely, but you have to be real with them. Right. Say, well, first of all, this girl's half your age. Yes. This girl has never had kids. This girl has no stress in her life. Mm -hmm. This, and you just keep building off of that Mm -hmm. as to why it's going to be very difficult to look like that person. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's, Obviously, at the time, I didn't know that. I do know now, and that's why I'm preaching that, that that's not the way to hire a coach. That's not the way to, like, go into any sort of fitness journey is to be like, I want to look exactly like that girl. does not work. There's different genetics. You obviously know this. Um, So, yeah, I I hired this coach, and I wanted to do the NPC, which the NPC is how you get into the IFBB, for anyone that doesn't understand that. You literally, like, have to, you know, rise in the ranks of the NPC. NPC is also the federation that's non, like not drug tested either. Right. So I picked this coach knowing that if I ever wanted to dabble on the dark side, um, at least I would get comfortable with him enough to be able to move into that. So him and I did three shows where I was natural. Um, we did one bikini show, and then I did two figure shows under him. In the NPC as a natural? Yes. That's a tough place to be in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I learned that the hard way too. Yes. Yeah. I did an NPC show as a natural and you can't, it's just apples and oranges. It is. I had a great shape. I was just never big enough. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You could be conditioned. Oh yeah. But I was, you're outmassed by 20, 30 pounds on stage. Oh, for sure. You look like, you look ridiculous standing next to some of these guys. Oh yeah. Like you stand out again. I had great shape. I had great posing. I just was going to be dwarfed in size yeah. every time. So you kept getting outsized mm-hmm. for three shows. What decision did you make, Paige? <laughs> I decided to go to the dark side, you know, got to use a little bit of drugs and stuff and okay. play the game. Yeah. That's what you do. You play the game and uh, that's how okay. it goes. I want you, for those who are listening, Yeah. the dark side means steroids. Yes. Steroids have a horrible stereotype. Oh. Okay. I want you to explain to those watching or listening how important, this is going to sound strange, how important drug use is at the higher levels of bodybuilding. <laughs> I can't think of any pro that doesn't dabble in some sort of steroid PED gear, whatever term you might hear. And don't get me wrong, I don't know what everybody takes, but I'm sure they take a little bit of something. Some take a lot, some take a little. It don't matter. You still take something, right? So, again, when you're at that level, um, you're going to be fighting with people that have elite genetics and use gear. Are you kidding me? Yeah. (laughs) So is it safe to say it's part of the sport? It is. At that level. Oh, for sure. Don't get me wrong. I know a few girls that have turned pro naturally. Very few, but they do not last natural long once they're in the pro level. Yeah. So, again, for those watching or listening, steroids, first of all, it's not an instant fix. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It takes a lot of work 
whether you're using them or not mm -hmm. to get to that level. Mm -hmm. It's part of the sport. You cannot compete at that level without some help. Oh, absolutely. And not. for those who can, we're talking point oh 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 one percent of people that cool. have elite, elite genetics that can do that. Right. 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 So what is your experience with your steroid use and how did your body change and at what point did you realize that that was the path that you wanted to take? Yeah, so uh, 2019 was the year that was my first bodybuilding show that was no longer natural. And I just remember uh, for all of my shows, I was always not conditioned enough. I just was never pushed hard enough with the diet. Yeah. And again, like you said, drugs don't mean that you're going to look the part, right? Like it's not some sort of aid of your you know hard work in the gym. It's not an aid to like diet and make more fat come off. It's none of that. You still got to do all the hard work. I think if I could help the audience understand, steroids are great for recovery. Sure. It's great so that you can work out harder and recover better and faster. When you're natural, it it takes a lot more of recovery to kind of, you know, you might train hard, but did your body recover hard? Right. So that's where, you know, you can excel a little faster with the drugs. I think a lot of people think steroids is cheating. Yeah. Like, oh, but they, but they use, that's why they... No, mm -hmm. it's not cheating. No. It's just what you do. If you so, know the science. <laughs> yeah, if you know the science. <laughs> so you weren't conditioned enough. You had the size. Um, yeah. So you had to get really uncomfortable. Oh, for sure. So um, I did one show in the 2019 with that previous coach. The The drugs that I was using, um, I didn't really see any like terrible side effects. Um, I took Winstrol a little bit for a show, and that was probably where I saw a little bit more of that voice change that you'll hear some girls talk about mm. with certain drugs. So the voice change did happen a little bit. Uh, Winstrol is also the type that would make your joints real stiff and dry because okay. it, it makes the muscle look hard. So it's if it makes your muscle look hard, it's going to take out some water. Takes water, and, yeah. Yeah, and take out of your joints. Right. So that might have been another little side effect. Um, and uh, so eventually, uh, after that 2019 show, I ended up switching to my current coach, Cami. So then I've been under a cami and I chose her as a coach just because I had followed her online for a long time. I really liked her personality and what she presented on her social media. She was always very open and educated. I also saw where she took her pro career um, and just saw her level of conditioning. So I just was like, out of all of these pieces, I, I did a much better job at picking a coach that time. So she was the one that eventually got me conditioned properly. <laughs> Good job, Cammy. And I'll put Cammy's <laughs> Instagram information yeah. on the screen. If anybody's looking for a coach or yeah. wants to learn more about female bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. um, so first show with Cammy. Mm -hmm. What year was it? Well, uh, literally like right after I hopped off stage in 2019, I emailed her and was like, I'm ready to go when you are. So I gave her a full off season. We were going to do a show in 2020. Obviously, the pandemic happened, and she gave me that choice. She said, do you want to start prep, or are we going to shut it down? And I said, I'm not prepping for nationals with no gym. Are you crazy? <laughs> so we ended up uh, not doing a show together till 2021. Yeah. You said off-season. <laughs> Tell me the importance of an off-season. A, what is an off-season, and the, what is the importance of an off-season? Uh, well, first of all, an off season is when you are pretty much not stepping on stage. You're going to be in a surplus of calories. You're going to be eating more. You're going to have a little bit more of that flexibility, um, which you will learn isn't really flexibility. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, so I had to give Cammy time to understand my body as well. So I already knew that going in. So, you know, the longer the off season, the better. It gives her more time to kind of play with food, get to know me. You're establishing that, like, hey, this is when we check in, which I never had a problem with not checking in. I don't know if you have clients like this. I know it's probably common, uh, but I've never missed a check-in. It's in. a struggle sometimes. I can't even imagine <clears throat> it. I just can't because I don't want to waste your time or my coach's time, right? I don't want to waste mine. So you got to check in or you can't do your job, right? Here's my philosophy on check-ins. <laughs> I do have a lot of clients, and if you're one of the clients that are – hearing this i'm not targeting you but checking in takes what five ten minutes let's be real mm -hmm. it doesn't take very much time you're taking some pictures you're writing some notes mm -hmm. 
about certain aspects of how your week went, whether you had an adverse reaction to a certain food or you were sick a few days or you were super stressed or you missed a meal, just a little journal, five, 10 minutes. I don't, Paige, I, every weekend there's Pulling an excuse oh, yeah. why I didn't get a check-in. Life happens. Everybody's busy. It's five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Look at your screen on time on your phone. It's probably hours. Mm -hmm. Take five to 10 minutes from that. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in your F and check in. Right. But again, like you said, without that check in, your coach has no idea if something's working or something's not working. Right. Correct. Yes. Okay. And again, at least if you can get your pictures, you know, do your little quarter turns, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And then a scale weight and just be like, hey, I'll fail you in the details later. At least here's pictures yes. to base off of last week yes. if you're consistent with your check ins. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, again, I went through the whole off season process, gave Cami the appropriate time because I hate, I hate that. I don't want to be that client ever. That's like, hey, I'm going to hire you as a coach. I want to get ready for this show in like, you know, four months. Yeah. whatever it might be that's not that's rude make it happen yeah, yeah. that it's it, i can't even fathom that like yeah. learning someone's body takes time right i mean the, the type of foods and i'm at the point now i think me and cammy have five years under our belt now you know so it's just like then she knows my body more than i know my own and you're still learning even though it's <laughs> yeah. been five years right? right yeah it never ends Oh, absolutely not. Especially now, you know, again, when we start to dabble with like gear and then just like as you age, your body changes, right? So then, you know, what might have worked one year or with a previous coach isn't working now. So we had to go through all of that. So in 20, you know, we started a prep at the end of 2020 so that I could do shows in early 2021. And um, I remember, it, uh, you know, it I mean, for a while, like I just had a, such a hard time losing weight. My body really fights it. So we had to really like, she had to cut more calories on me yeah. than she probably would have wanted to, you know? Yeah. And everybody responds differently. Oh you yeah. You know, some clients, they'll lose three pounds a week <laughs> eating 2000 calories a day. And then others, you're almost starving them. Yes. And yep. it's still a struggle. It is. It is. That's what's that's what's real hard is when because I'm one of those people right so I mentally had to tell myself you really can't have any like mistakes or screw ups because it is gonna just take you longer Even longer and you're gonna have to diet harder and uh, that's nobody's fault it's just it's just how I am it's yeah. just how I'm built you gotta work with it. Do you feel like you've cracked that code mm. with your we'll say optimal conditioning? It's gotten better. Every, every off season looks different, right? Every prep looks different. So I would say that I've found more foods that agree with me. And what is surprising is a lot of those foods are not your bodybuilding norm. Again, I'm always the weird kid and I will continue to be the weird kid eating and the weird things. <laughs> because I know a little bit about your journey and the struggles that you've been through. Mm -hmm. I know what that magic little recipe was and then you had to go keto. Yep. Yeah, right? I did. We did keto for uh, the pro debut prep. Uh, we we hit a spot where it just, I went through like three months with no change because I started uh, my pro debut prep super early, which was like the week before Christmas to do a show in May. So that's like super early compared to most people, right? Um, and yeah, we I just, nothing was happening really for like three months. And we, my coach was like, I've never done this before, but we're going to do keto. <laughs> Um, she's like, I've, you know, some female bodybuilders have done it and had success. It's just none of them talk about it. Yeah. So, you know, she was, I mean, my coach is really good about <laughs> her fixating on trying to solve a problem. Right. So she did all of the research that she could trying to dig up stuff. And a lot of it was just from like bodybuilders that, you know, from years ago, because like I said, it's just kind of a keto is not really a bodybuilding diet no. norm at all. And I think that's. In my opinion, I think that's it's hard to build muscle without some carbs, mm -hmm. right? But when you're cutting, carbs aren't as necessary as when you're trying to build, correct? Do you right. agree with that? Yeah, and I would say too that keto is definitely like a two months max type of diet. Yeah, it's we not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we did two uh, two months of that. I mean, I lost twelve pounds in like a week and a half. 
Like it was like, oh you my probably god! Dropped water like yeah, crazy. My bo- I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, I've like first of all, I was totally cool with having chicken thighs. Never did I have a diet with chicken thighs in it. <laughs> More fat and salmon than my chicken <laughs> and almonds and. And the best part was, is I was like never hungry. I was so satiated with the high fats. That's crazy. And we were doing at that point. It was true true keto too. It yep. wasn't like the bodybuilding keto that so I'm sure you've ketosis, heard of. Like, yeah. Okay. So we did true keto for two months. Um, which then after that we did incorporate some carb, and that's where it became more of the bodybuilding uh, type. Yeah. But eventually, it was just eating fish and asparagus. So. Okay. So your pro debut, where was that? Pittsburgh. Uh, it was about, I think it was May 10th of last year. Yeah, about then that was the pro debut. And um, I kind of went into it knowing that I wasn't going to be my best, but that's okay because I already knew that I was going to do a couple more shows. Well, stage time is never wasted, right? No, and, and don't get me wrong. I would have loved to look awesome for Pittsburgh. But uh, again, it was my pro debut. And as much as I practice posing, you're going to be nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much does stress come into play when you're prepping much. or up it's on that stage? Oh, it, it, it does take a lot of, uh, s- yeah. Stress management, stress management stresses me out. <laughs> like, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm trying my best to not stress, but I will stress trying to fix the stress um and that is being straight up honest and if and i have to think to myself if i have these stress things going on imagine someone at the olympia level i can't even imagine like when i was on the pro debut stage i was like oh i am not ready for the olympia if this is how i feel from a a mental perspective oh my gosh like your whole body is shaking it's nervous and you're trying to like not wander off in thought of like negative things you're trying to be in the moment and be present and that's really hard because when you're on stage time goes so fast yeah now stress can ruin your look Mm -hmm. water retention out the ass yeah cortisol cortisol which is the importance of being low stress leading into a show and on show day as hard as that is Mm -hmm. what do you do personally to kind of manage your stress um, I've gotten better at just getting off of social media the last couple of days, which is really hard, right? Because you get all these people that want to wish you good luck and you want to give people updates and all this other things. So it's a hard balance, but you will eventually learn that just kind of stepping away from the phone is really good for your stress. Um, you know, just kind of finding things that make you feel good. Like for me, I was going back to my anime and just kind of feeling like a kid. Yeah. Kind of escaping reality because bodybuilding is such a 24 hour sport. You are thinking about your body and your workout and what you're doing all day. Mm-hmm. And again, I like listening to podcasts. So even when I'm at work, which is not bodybuilding related, but I'm still listening to bodybuilding podcasts. Yeah. So my life was just bodybuilding all day. So at least when I watch anime or Pokemon or whatever I'm watching, it is like. You disconnect yeah. from that bodybuilding life for yeah. a moment. Yeah. Let yeah. me be 13-year-old thirteen, 13 Paige for just a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about other stress-relieving techniques? Do you meditate? Hot bath, yoga, okay. a little bit of stretching, YouTube, three free videos to like, you know, listen to calming music or anything like that. Um, but again, getting in a hot bath is really nice for your muscles. Good to just kind of relax before bed because in prep it's it's great to go to bed early if you can you probably want to you're you know let's just have a time machine to breakfast please (laughs) because you're starving and you don't want to be awake thinking about when you're going to eat next yes um epsom salt bath Mm -hmm. yeah yep we will do the epsom salt bath and then like peak week we'll do like a a homemade sauna you know to just to kind of like dry out Mm -hmm. before the show and try to get as much water off and again i'm eating a ton of asparagus you're really trying to drink water during the day for your muscles because that's healthy, but then you're also trying to get it off so that you look nice and crisp and it's just this whole water load thing going on. Now, asparagus is a natural diuretic. Yeah. And I have plenty of clients that completely take over all grocery store supplies of asparagus. And you're actually one of the ones who like put the ads out like it's hey a- asparagus is on sale at such and such grocery oh, store always on sale at easter time and guess what we are here at easter time <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny um what, what was i gonna say 
Oh, uh, about the diuretics. Yeah, 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 yeah. So asparagus for water retention or mm-hmm. water cutting. Um, the the peak week for those who aren't into bodybuilding, that is the week prior to your show day. Yeah. Now, I think peak week is. People think it's like a magical pill. <laughs> like peak week, you're going to transform from this puffy muscular mess to this shredded jacked stage look in one week it doesn't work like that no i think the thing is people see other people make dramatic changes in that week and they're like whoa you know they that's where they think it's magical because again you can't believe everything you see online right and yes you will see some crazy cool changes during peak week but that's not like all the work was done prior you should probably look ready by five to four weeks out that's what I was hoping you're going to say. I, yeah. I've been around the block. <laughs> yeah. Peak week is not a magic pill. Okay. It's there to fine tune your look, but all the work is in the off season. Yes. And the months leading into your, yeah. your prep. I tell everyone when you're in prep, like towards the end, you should be relaxing and just coasting into the show. All the work is done. If you're going to the gym, trying to like, gain crazy but what are you doing that was the off season right now you're just trying to prepare for a show so just think of like the off season was climbing up the hill and then you're coasting into the show going down the hill and then the very end you're just kind of like getting ready to like pull the e-brake a little bit day by day so and the more structured your off season is the easier prep is if you're eating like an asshole during the off season and have no structure no time and no you know weighing food the prep's going to be completely miserable because it's going to be like, you're going to have to like relearn how to do all that. But if your off season is the same structure as prep, just with different amounts of foods, Mm -hmm. prep is so much easier. Yes. And that goes back to that off season flexibility that I was doing in quotations. The flexibility is going out to a restaurant, but you know, ordering the chicken salad instead of at home ordering or just ha- not ordering, but yeah. making the basic chicken meal that you'd be eating every day. Right. So that's the flexibility is going out, but still eating a clean yeah. meal, not ordering a pizza, fries, and all the nine yards if yeah. you want to be a pro competitor. And I think that control, and everybody's different. Yes. There are plenty of bodybuilders that are very flexible in their off season, and they are very successful yeah. at the pro level. There's a lot of genetics that come into play, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Drugs that come into play to give them that flexibility. Yeah. But staying in that much control makes you feel like you're in control. Yeah. Right. You know you've done 100. percent And when you're on that stage, you've given 100. percent Yeah. 100. Right? percent Yeah. Even when if you, you don't win, the, nope. You did everything you possibly could. That's why I, I never regret any show I did, even if I wasn't conditioned or you know, didn't fit the part or whatever. It was the fact that I still did everything in my control. Um, And again, I've told, you know, my clients posing and stuff, you know, trust your coach, you know, they're giving you, you're the one that's driving the wheel. They're just supposed to execute your plan, right? Do what you're told. So at the end, a lot of my clients are just like in their head and they're stressed and they're like, I don't know, like he's giving me a refeed. I don't know about that. And I'm just like, listen, don't worry about it. Go into autopilot. That's what I was eventually doing. I had to yeah. do two hours of cardio every day. You think I want to do that? No, you just turn on autopilot, put on some music, and you do it. Because, um, again, if you don't do it, that's you getting on stage, not doing everything that you could have. And I don't that don't sit right with me. So. Bodybuilding isn't supposed to be comfortable. <laughs> it's just not. No. You look amazing, but you feel like death. Yes. Right? Yes. So if you're comfortable, you're probably not doing something right, or you're probably not working hard enough. Yeah. Think about the people that uh, try to avoid being hungry. And I'm like, you're dieting. What do you mean? Like, you can't. (laughs) Chewing gum, drinking diet pop. Yeah. You're still going to be starving. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. And you will eat a meal and be hungry literally 20 minutes later. Yeah. It don't. mm -mm. Nope. Yeah. It's not fun. It's not supposed to be fun. No. But you go into this sport knowing. That it's not going to be a fun time. No, I mean, it's it's cool to learn the journey, learn more about yourself. It's more of like the note keeping part that's kind of fun. But the whole like challenges that you have to kind of just deal with is like, it's going to grow you as a person. 
but it's like you're reading my mind page. Oh, we know. How did bodybuilding change you as a person? Oh, goodness. Well, <laughs> there's good and bad to that. But the good stuff is, is I've learned to, you know, understand that I have to do the work if you want the reward. You know, you got to follow a plan. And I also learned that food wasn't put on this earth to just always taste good either. Sometimes you just have to eat it. And yeah, sometimes I have to eat cold rice and fish in the car. And I didn't care because do you think that stage day look cares about my feeling towards a cold fish meal in the car? I don't nope. care. Your body don't care. Nope. And there, there's never a good time to prep either, right? Nope. So you just have to learn to navigate through obstacles in that way. You know, you got to get used to just like, hey, sorry, there's a funeral or something. And, and you know, your weight loss goals and stuff don't care about what's going on in your personal life. And you still got to show up and you still got to pack a meal. And maybe that you might lose sleep and, you, and then you're like, then what? So there's like these things that nothing really gets easy, right? right? But you just learn to just go, okay, what can I control right now? Yeah. A lot of it is planning ahead. Yeah. You're thinking as a bodybuilder, you're thinking days, weeks ahead of what could possibly get in my way. Mm -hmm. What am I going to have to work around? Mm -hmm. If you know you have a graduation party coming up, do an act like, oh, didn't have my meal ready, had to go through fa fast food. No, you knew about this thing. <laughs> or have food ready in those cases where you're caught off guard. How about the people that go to a restaurant and go, whoops, I forgot my food, and then they, they order the worst thing on the menu. Yep. You could have found something. Sensible. Yeah, yeah, like you don't have to not eat anything, but there has to be at least, I mean – most places can make you grilled chicken. If they have a chicken on the menu, yeah. I'd be like, I don't care what I got to pay. Can you just slap some chicken on that grill, please? Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I travel a lot for work. Mm -hmm. And it is it is amazing how many excuses I hear. Oh, I'm going to be out of town for a week, so just consider this a complete fail week. No, it doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. You can find healthy options everywhere you go. Absolutely. And again, there's better options and i tell if anybody comes to me and they say they they say they want to be a pro right and they go on a vacation or whatever it is i'm like okay i don't want to be the party pooper but you might have to just go on that vacation and not eat like a jerk right but if you want booze or dessert i always say you got to pick one or the other you can't do both yeah. you can't have alcohol and cake and i know that happens a lot when people have birthdays mm -hmm. again you can have another birthday. You, holidays come every year. I have skipped so many birthdays and holidays because I was in prep. And again, I have a really good family support and they get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've had to skip a lot of holidays and birthdays. Again, your body goals don't care about what's going on. <laughs> no. And for a lot of you, you're probably like, that is so ridiculous. I could never do bodybuilding. You guys are, are psycho. <laughs> Some of this stuff applies to normal fitness goals such as weight loss yeah you still need to implement a lot of these sacrifices even when you're just a stay-at-home mom with three kids trying to lose weight you still have to have this similar type of discipline you do yeah you got to learn really, how to cook it's not <laughs> you you need to learn how to cook you need to learn how to weigh your food mm -hmm. in meal prep yeah. If you can do those three things, you're more than halfway there. Yeah, and you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't eat enough, but they eat the wrong things. Yep. So constantly, I'm sure you get this with men. They never they never eat as much as they should. Yep. And then for females, I feel like they don't eat enough of the right things. Yeah. It's um, females are more like high carb, high fat, not enough protein. Yes. Right. It's always carbs. Yep. Always. And again, I get that you need carbs to build muscle, but some people don't realize you're eating way too much carb and not enough of the other things. Yeah. And again, when it comes to females, in my personal experience, we kind of will do better with the high fats. Yeah. Um, not everyone, but you'd be surprised how many girls will lose dramatic weight by just kind of lowering the carbs a little bit and better yeah. choice carbs. Yeah. And again, I think people just get bored. Yeah. So. Well. Bodyboarding is boring. It really is. It's very monotonous. You're eating the same damn thing every day, every meal mm -hmm. within reason. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the way it is. That's yeah. the sport. It is. Um, so I asked you how bodybuilding changed you. You mentioned a few 
positive things. What yeah. are some negatives? So some of the negatives is you get so lean, you can't look at yourself any other way, right? Like right now, I'm in my off season, and I definitely have had my days where I put on a pair of jeans that did fit, and then it, they don't, and I'm sitting in them, and I'm like, oof, just the fact that these are a little too tight, it's on your mind. So you start to get these like body dysmorphia goals, and yep. and it's pretty much everyone in the sport, whether they talk about it or not, you know, you will put on some extra body fat. And it's crazy because even at your off season weight, there's probably someone out there that's obese that would love to be your off season weight. Right. right? And my coach often reminds me now, she's like, you're still not at your heaviest. Yeah. So even if I feel big right now, she's like, you're still not as big as you have been, you know, I'm kind of in the middle. Yeah. And again, I've had a lot of recent health issues. So it's, she's like, you literally like just had all this stuff happen and she's like, you still have like, you're still in a decent yes. spot. I think what happens and she said it to me very well put, I think we just, our bodies haven't been able to keep up with that dramatic change. So then you're kind of hyper-focused on this negative <clears throat> because your body and your mind just hasn't fully comprehend what just happened in a quick amount of time. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just how we go about our like trauma bonding or experiences that we go through. So uh, one of the negatives of bodybuilding was just, you know, having a few health concerns, you know, kind of seeing your body differently without drugs, uh, just putting on more body fat. Um, and again, uh, I, I think it's great to use a food scale to weigh, uh, but I don't know what it's like to not use a food scale now. So I think that's yeah. kind of a negative too. I don't have that balance. I literally am like, I don't know what it's like to really eat meals. Like, I don't know how, what it's like to go through a whole just day. Just haphazardly not just picking something up and eating it. Yeah. This whole, like, uh, people do that intuitive eating. I don't know what that's like. Yeah. I literally weigh my food based off of a food plan. I don't do macros. I literally yeah. tell my coach, tell me when, how much, and what to eat. And I will I've done that for five years. But isn't that easier for you as the client? You don't have to think. Right. Yeah, I'm dumb. You cook it, <laughs> you weigh it, and you eat it. Yeah. You don't need to put things into a calculator and make sure that, oh, I have 40 more grams of carbs to eat today. So I can't. That would stress me out. Oh, no. And some people like that macro based diet. They do. They like that it's just, flexibility, mental thing, whatever it is. It, it is a lot more work on the person that's doing it, though. Right. And I think if you're doing a contest prep, you will eventually have to keep it pretty simple. Even if you start out with macros, I think you'll eventually get to the point where there's only so many lean meats. And yeah. um, again, I was just eating fish and asparagus for like every meal. So like, what's the point of macros when yeah. you're literally <laughs> trying to keep the variables the same? And it's easier for the coach because then she doesn't have to play guesswork with why are you bloated today? Like, what did you eat different? Right. Like. I'm literally only eating fish and asparagus. So if something happens, it's a little easier to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's less of a moving target. Mm -hmm. The less options you have, if you're bloated, okay, something had to change. Right. It's not like, oh, I ate, you know, eight different protein sources this week. Where do you start? Yes. Yes. And I, I do want to clarify for anyone. The reason why it's fish and asparagus is again, asparagus is a diuretic and it's good fiber and vegetable. Uh, fish is just a very easy digestible protein and it's lean. So while chickens, chicken's fine. I do know competitors don't like fish and they'll just eat chicken. That's fine. But the reason why we just stick to fish, I like fish. It's just less bloating. It yeah. just digests easier. I can't do chicken anymore. Yeah. It's a, it's, it has, it's a digestive thing, right? right? And your midsection is very important in bodybuilding. So you definitely want to geared towards food that's a little bit easier on the on the belly and that goes for training and uh, egg weights are fine too yeah um you mentioned some recent health concerns mm -hmm. can you elaborate on some of that yeah so <laughs> last year was you know my pro rookie year went great i did three shows pittsburgh uh canada for toronto and then i went over to vancouver uh i had a great time i would definitely have to say that my experience as a pro was good. I didn't expect to win any of those shows because again, I'm at the pro level for the first time. So I'm kind of back at being the smallest and um, it was a good experience and I prepared for that. Now, what had happened was, you know, after the shows were over in July, 
you know, I was kind of going into that off season phase. So I was, you know, definitely dabbling in some new steroids, um, definitely going super hard in the gym. You know what I mean? I am like, I am trying to hold on to that post show, you know, getting that food back in, getting the glycogen, getting my carbs back after just fishing asparagus. Um, and I mean, I'm Actually growing like a pump crazy. For once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I was having a great off season, yeah. really was. Uh, and again, um, you know, at the end of November, I went and got my yearly checkup. Everything's good. Nothing really, nothing really concerning. Uh, but then December hit. And again, like I mentioned, I have like three jobs. So, uh, and again, there was the holidays. It's obviously going to be a busy time for graphic design and grocery stores with your Christmas hams and Thanksgiving and blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, out of nowhere, I had a stroke. <laughs> yeah. So, this, yeah, it's, I don't even know. It came out of nowhere. And I literally woke up with it. I'm 31. Very young. Yeah. And this happened four months ago. Yeah. Like I said, I had a checkup like right before Thanksgiving. Everything was fine. And then December hit and I'm trying to do multiple <clears> jobs. <throat> like the stress, you know, we were talking about how bad yeah. stress can be. Um, and I do have high blood pressure on both sides of my family, but I have never had any sort of concern to be worried about that right now. So your body was under a lot of stress yeah. with hard in the gym. You know, yeah. you're back to that off season mindset of just like 110% yeah. every day. Your mind is stressed. Yeah. So your body was just completely run down, essentially. Burnout. Yeah, for sure. How did you know you had a stroke? What What happened? Um, so literally, I just remember that week. Um, I was extremely busy that week. I had to be somewhere every hour. I was literally like, I have to go, go, go. Uh, I was overstimulated. I felt like a computer when it's in overdrive and it starts to overheat and the fans are going. Mm -hmm. That's what my body felt like multiple times during that week. Um, and I just kept... I'm like, I got to do what I got to do. I got to do my cardio. Got to go to the gym. I got to work. I got to go be here. Um, so I was all over the place. And then I'm also stressing about things that I'm going to have to do in the future. So then there was that also component. So what had happened was I just went to bed, woke up the next morning, and I remember my left eye was kind of like red. And I kind of was like thinking I had pink eye. And then my whole right side of my body was kind of numb. Like it just did not feel right. And I actually was plan to do a podcast that day. So I'm just like, well, my eye don't look that great, but I'm going to throw on some makeup and try to hide it. I, I also had to work. So I'm going through work. Um, and the podcast was scheduled in the middle of the day. So it kind of took that as my lunch break, uh, did the podcast went really well. And then um, I also had a planned cheat day or sorry, a cheat meal that evening. Yeah, yeah. So after the gym, or sorry, after work, I was going to go to the gym, have a great leg day, and go out to eat with my friends because I had already made reservations and had this whole thing ready, right? So I don't feel right, but I don't care because I got life to live. Um, so yeah, I, I did, did work, did a podcast, went to the gym, had a, I mean, it was not my best leg day, but I still had a good leg day. Yeah. And then I went and had food with my friends and had a great time. And uh, I was like, guys, I'm not feeling too good, but uh, I swear I'm not sick. I just don't know what's wrong. Yeah, I'm off. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so after that, I still felt the same the next day. I thought maybe I could sleep it off. Felt the same the next day, went to the ER, and they had told me that my blood pressure was extremely high, which I believe was uh, 161 over um, 87 or 97, something up there. It's up there. Yeah. So, and they literally did a CT scan and they were like, no, oh, you're just a little dehydrated, so just, you know, drink some water. Here's an IV. Yeah, they were literally like, you're a little low in sodium, just eat a pretzel. And I'm thinking, well, I can't do that, I but thanks. Eat a pretzel. Yeah, I was like, I'll just, I'll just sprinkle some more pink salt on all my food. So uh, I left there with all the same symptoms, didn't know what to do. They were just kind of like, go see your PCP on Monday. Again, this is a Saturday. PCP is not going to be open until Monday. I had to make an appointment, couldn't get in until Tuesday. Mm. And as a pet sitter, they thought I had Lyme's disease. So then they had to do all this testing for Lyme disease only for that to take like a week and a half. To get the results and back. that was negative. Again, this is also December. So you're creeping up to the holidays. So there's going to be a block of time I can't get in and get testing done. Well, I got into an MRI before Christmas. And that was where they could see that it was a stroke. And even my own PCP was like, well, that's not what I expected. She 
she really thought that it wouldn't have been that way. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what did they see in the MRI? Was it a brain Brain stem thing? stroke. They said in the left, that's why my left eye had that face paralysis. It was because there was some sort of clawed thing going on. Just more of like a TIA, I think is what they put it as. Um, just like a, a, really just a stroke. I don't think it was quite a mini stroke, but it was more classified as a stroke. How did that make you feel being, you're 31 years old and you had a stroke? Scary had, as hell? I had so much going on, I didn't have time to think about it. Like my entire month of December was a lot of pet sitting. Um, and then I had a few girls getting ready for national shows. So I had posing, I had my full-time job. So life carried so, on. Yeah. And I had to make time for these appointments. I think what really stressed me out was just the fact that everybody else was stressing out around me for me. And I literally was like, I have shit to do. And they were like, you could die. And I'm like, but I have shit to do. <laughs> yeah. And as being as someone who's very disciplined and I felt like people were relying on me to do my job, I definitely uh, had a hard time being like, yeah, I, I didn't even take any time off work. So you gave yourself zero grace. No. <laughs> I mean, I stopped going to the gym, which, which was hard because I did try a couple times and I literally was like, I feel terrible. I could just feel my blood pressure rising yeah because i'm in the gym trying to not think about things but also like work out hard and get a benefit just not it just was not working mm -mm. so how have you changed your lifestyle since this stroke have you made any health adjustments or <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i will state because i did talk about the steroids i was completely off steroids uh since early november so, so a month prior to the stroke. Yeah. Okay. So, and again, my doctors know about it. And even they said steroids probably didn't help, but that's not the cause. Okay. So I do want to point that out there for anybody. I was going to ask you. Yeah. No, I've already asked because they were like, yeah, you should probably never do those again. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> but eh, thanks for yeah, the advice. I but. figured. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it wasn't, it's just that they don't help. And it's, sure. it, I relate it back to tanning beds, right? Tanning beds don't give you cancer, but if you kind of already have that pre-existing like family issue, or maybe you do have it, it's only going to make things worse because you're using the tanning bed. Yeah. Steroids can make things worse if you already have that. So again, I don't, even now I have done so much testing. I have done other CT scans, other like, uh, I have a cardiologist, so I have I had all these echograms done, more blood tests. I've had so much done. I went and did sleep studies too for sleep apnea, rolled that out, no sleep apnea. Um, so I've been trying to find it and the doctors are like, we just think that you've worked out too hard for too long. You've put so much stress on your body that it just, this was its way of kind of saying you better chill out. Which um, you kind of did, but not really no i'm still go 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 <clears throat> and i'm still trying to get better at giving myself the grace that i wasn't giving you know even my own coach right now she's just like you know i'm not going to feed you air she's like because again i i really don't take much calories to grow yeah so she's like i cannot i don't want to feed you too much but i can't feed you air and you're not doing the activity so I am more of just like going to have to gain a little bit of weight because I'm eating without a lot of like movement. So I've been trying to do walks outside. Oh, I cannot wait for it to get warmer out because I'm walking now and it's nice, but it's still a little cold. Yeah. Yeah. So, and just, it has been nice. I have had some good positives. I actually have a boyfriend now and I was single for four years. So it was really nice to finally find someone. Cause I remember, um, I didn't know it was a stroke yet, right? That was it was like the week before, uh, like after my stroke. Okay. Uh, and we had our first date, and I'm like trying to hide it again with the makeup, oh and I'm just thinking, I can't. Like again, I know that you couldn't tell with my eye, but like I'm thinking, uh, I swear That's I'm not all broken. You can think about. Yeah, and I'm like, I swear I'm not broken. Like, because if somebody went on a date with me and was like, "Hi, I had a stroke," <laughs> I'd be like, uh, "Check, please." <laughs> yeah, get me out of here, like. Oh Bye. My God. <laughs> so, Red flag. Uh, yeah, I tried to get away from that conversation for a few weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. you were single for four years, which yeah. as a bodybuilder is was probably kind of nice, right? It was you don't great. have to answer anybody. You set your own schedule. I had my own bed. 
I got hangry and didn't have to make someone upset. Yeah. I lived alone and had my own space. And since I work from home, it was great. Coworkers didn't have to get upset about smelly microwave fish. Oh, they loved that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would say that turning pro, being single and living alone definitely contributed to turning pro as well because I had full control of eating all my meals fresh. My kitchen was right there. I didn't hate my meals. It was easy for me to go to the gyms because I lived really close to like a handful. Um, I had really good training partners where I lived too. So it was like at least I got some socialization with yeah. them. Uh, but yeah, uh, as you can tell. So I do want to pinpoint <clears throat> your, your pro journey. You were very fortunate that you had the lifestyle that you did. Yes. <laughs> for bodybuilding. Yeah. You were single. <laughs> you don't have kids. You have a good job. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're stable. Mm -hmm. Your stress levels are relatively low. Because you're not dealing with families and running here, running there. There are a lot of competitors that don't have that luxury. No. They're single mothers, mothers of multiple kids, full-time jobs. That's completely different ballpark there. Oh, for sure. You know? And oh, gosh. there are very elite pro athletes that get to that point with all of those. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like I, I tell mom every prep, I'm always like, I would never be able to do all this cardio if I had a kid waiting for me at home that right. needed to be fed. And then I don't even want to look at their food because it's not what I'm eating. And then they can like, eat egos. Yeah. And then they throw it on the floor or something. Oh, <laughs> right. man, I ain't. And then you got to clean up after them. I can't even I don't even have energy to clean up after while myself. you're hungry and you're dealing with all that shit. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> so. So I'm not saying that you didn't work hard, but your your lifestyle was yes. catered around the yes. bodybuilding lifestyle. I used the best, like, that's why I don't regret anything that has happened or what I did, because I literally had it good. Yeah. I did. Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. Now that you kind of added a, a cog to the wheel, now you have a boyfriend. Yeah. How do you think, he knows, obviously he knows you're a competitive professional bodybuilder. Oh, yeah. So he's ready <laughs> for it. Yeah. He thinks he is anyways. <laughs> yes. And he has told me that. <laughs> He's like, I'll be ready. I'll be your full support. I'm like, oh, you have no idea, bud. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, I do feel bad for, for spouses or partners of competitors because they are sort of the, the punching bag. They can be, yeah. If you can don't know how be. to handle your emotions, right. Yeah. Now, my girlfriend tells me that I was actually pretty easy to, to deal with. Yeah. I, I tried to be very aware of my pain. Yes. To not take it out on. You it's not to. their fault that I chose that goal. No. And I had to remind myself that a lot. Mm -hmm. Not their fault. I want to step on stage when I turn 40 years old as a lifetime goal. Yes. So why would I take out my pain and my misery on them? Yep. It's just, we all have moments of weakness yes. where we're not perfect, but I think I did a decent job of controlling my, my hanger and my moods, but you know, yeah, your boyfriend says he's ready. <laughs> Are you, who knows? Are you ready for this? But, Guess but yeah, it comes out. with time and just understanding yeah. yourself and going through the process a little bit because you do eventually, like you said, you have these like thoughts in your head. It's like, I chose this. It's not their fault at all. It's yeah. and don't lash out on them. That's yeah. not fair. It's yeah. rude. Like how I always say, how would I feel? Right? Yeah. Like if you're hangry and you're upset with me because I kind of like burnt your chicken. <laughs> like first of all, I'm trying to help you so you can eat, right? Yeah. So yeah. like why get explosive or whatever or like again, like I would hope that um like if this spouse or partner is new to the process like mine will be I'm already going to have that good sit down conversation yeah. and be like, especially if I go into bikini, which I know we haven't mentioned yet, but if I go into bikini, I'm going to have to get way smaller. Yeah. That's going to be me dieting even harder. Very hard. yeah. So up front, just so you know, that fish and asparagus is a non-negotiable. Yeah. I will have to do this. I am going to really prioritize sleep and I don't want bothered. Um, you know what I mean? Like I'm someone like after living alone for so long, I don't want things touching me. Yeah. Like when I sleep, like. Yeah. You've right, developed a thing. lot of idiosyncrasies and yeah. you're used to it being your way. Right. All the time. Yes. 
<laughs> it's not, it's not going to be like that anymore. So yeah. you're both going to be learning a lot from each other. Right. I'm sure are. you already are. Oh, for sure. And it's, again, it's nice because when you've been single for four years, you're like, oh my God, like someone actually wants to spend time with me, like in that way, like really, really cool. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And That's like, so we funny. both live with our parents too. Okay. So it's kind of interesting that so again, you, you get your space. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, and it's fun because I feel like we're like 18 again. Because he, um, I'll briefly say that he was in school for eight years for his degree as a chiropractor, and I was bodybuilding for the last few years. So we both did something that required major focus. Out and now that we're in a better place, now see how the universe is like. Oh, here you go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice that we can now like understand each other's like hard routine. Yeah. And then make time for each other because then we've gotten better or we've learned to that communication's everything, right? Yeah. Bodybuilding has taught me to communicate better with my coach or just with my feelings or what's going on. Yeah. So at least I'll be able to give that to him and be like, hey, I'm about to do a fish and asparagus diet for a while and cardio is a non-negotiable, sleep is a non-negotiable. Just know that it's temporary. Yeah. I will be going to bed at this time. I will be getting yeah. up at this time. It won't be like this forever, and right. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> after this is over, we will definitely have date yeah. nights and stuff like yeah. that. I think that's yeah. As long as there's an under mutual understanding, that's that's yeah. what's important. Um, what was I going to ask you about next? Bikini. Yeah. <laughs> Figure to bikini. That's a big yeah, difference. Back to my roots. Um, why? Why do you? Th why do you want to transition back? Well, if I would like to compete again, um, being that I'm a pro now, I earned my pro card in 2021. So once you earn a pro card, you can't go back. You so can't you have be to compete in. as a pro yep. forever. Yep. At least in the IFBB, yep. which again, it's non-tested. So, uh, and again, like I mentioned, all the girls are taking something. And yeah. as I mentioned, I had a stroke. So if I would like to compete again, um, don't get me wrong, I am... 100% sure that there are bikini girls that dabble with gear, but it's not going to be as much as figure. So again, if I do want to compete, I would probably have a safer bet in bikini and being that I love to compete in general, I know how to pose for bikini. I think it's fun. I, I still think it's a beautiful division. Yeah. Even if the girls aren't massive, I actually like all the divisions just to be clear. I love every female division and male division i'm still going to be a fan of the sport now no matter what yeah. and um i just think that if i would like to step on stage again as a pro and use my pro card bikini is probably my safest bet i just would have to downsize so you do have legitimate health concerns with yeah. staying in figure with your stroke yeah i, I have to continue the stress management Working yeah. out is a stress. Yeah. And I was working out extremely hard. You know, there's there's no in between with me. I'm zero or a hundred. Am I going in the gym and I'm gonna completely murder myself? Or am I not gonna do anything at all? So Well you already have the the muscular foundation. Yes. So it's not like you need to build fifteen pounds of muscle in the next two years, right? Nope. I you're, do not you're, need gear. You have that mm -hmm. base already. Yep. It's just downsizing. Right. Yeah. I, I do need to build a, probably a little more in my glutes. But again, I think it, where I'm at in my, uh, you know, career or however you want to say it, like I can probably get away with doing more of the, the fluffy band workouts and stuff, yeah. which will be less stress. Um, again, that's not how you build a booty, ladies. But um, at, at being at my advanced level, I can probably start to form just in the glutes, just a little more fullness yeah. for bikini. Uh, I think I already have the shoulders. Um, and again, because bikini does not get judged on the back, I actually do not need to touch my back at all. I did not know that. Right. Well, in the OCB, which you're more familiar with, the, uh, the bikini girls can move their hair. They actually want you to. Where the IFBB and NPC figure pose, or I'm sorry, bikini posing, uh, you do not move your hair. They do so not want you to. shoulders, glutes, legs. Mm -hmm. mostly glutes but yeah you need mostly uh delts and glutes wow but you definitely need to have a little bit of quad and a little bit of hamstring but yeah. not too much because again this is bikini it's a mm -hmm. touch a muscle no striations nope no over conditioning nope they want <clears> you to be <throat> lean they want you to be tight but they don't want you to be uh like they don't want to see striations they don't want to see like any hard cuts it's kind of like just a touch yeah which is really hard like that carb up has to be nailed perfect. That's a good point. Like 
bikini is actually tough. Because you could overspill. Yeah, you could get too soft. Yep. And then, like, depending on what show you do and the judges, you know, some judges will be like, I like you a little softer. Yeah. Well, if you come into the show, come in a little more softer and that judge isn't there and maybe the other judge wants you to be a little sharper. It's tough. Yeah. See how you got to play this game? Plus, whom you're standing next to on stage alters how you look because now you have something to compare against. Yeah. Right. And, and some bikini pros just do not look good soft. Some of them have to come in hard. So then you're like, again, going back to, I want to look like this girl. Well, that girl might look better, harder. Yeah. And you're going to look good with just a touch more softness. And it's tough because sometimes you just got to keep getting up there and letting your coach find the right carb up and finding what judge likes you and being around different girls. Yeah. I think bikinis really tough. Is Coach Cammy ready to transform you to a bikini girl? She is so excited. Is yeah. Really? Oh yeah. That's she cool. was like, I'm excited for this new journey because yeah. um, a little bit about Cammy is she turned her her uh, her pro card was in women's physique, and then she's actually been body reshaping, re body recomp, whatever you want to call it, to wellness. Okay. So uh, I don't know if she'll ever compete ever again, but she's just enjoying that rebuild yeah. to feel better. About. Learning her body and how she yeah. can build certain areas. Yeah. Yeah, she really likes the wellness build. So it's cool because she's already done the physique to wellness. So now I can do the the figure to bikini. And I think it would just be a cool journey. I think it would be really different. And not that I'm doing it for other people because I am doing it for myself. But I think it would still be a cool story to share with people that I'm <laughs> – many people want to grow muscle. And I'm kind of like, oh, I already have enough. Now I got to, like, lose some. <laughs> I know. Must be nice, Paige. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it's still, like mm. – It's still hard. <laughs> yeah. It is. Losing yeah, muscle is just hard. hard. Yeah. Because Cammy's like, you do know we're going to have to do, like, hit cardio. She's like, I'm going to have you be doing, like, battle ropes. And I'm like, I've never even touched <laughs> battle ropes. But I've seen people do it. And I'm like – Oof. Yeah, burning ridiculous amount of calories. Right, yeah. low food and burning calories. To sounds burn sounds like a good time. <laughs> what could Yay. possibly go wrong? Bikini. <laughs> yeah, but it is. It's a it's another type of struggle. It is. Yeah, and it again, like we talked about, bodybuilding's fun, but it's more about that journey and that process. That's fun. Yeah. Um. I I want to touch one more time on the body dysmorphia type thing. Sure. And I make sure that I tell my competition clients that prepare your mind for how you're going to feel after your show day, because for seven hours, mm -hmm. roughly you're looking the best you've ever looked in your yeah. life. In most cases. Oh, for sure. Get all the pictures, by the way, all the pictures. You cannot maintain that. No, it's very unhealthy. And very unhealthy, <laughs> right? Yeah, you look cool, but I even look at my pictures and I'm like, I felt like crap. I might be smiling, but I felt like crap. And, um, you know, it, it's literally just looking good for a little bit and you will never look at yourself the same way because <clears throat> after you're that small and yeah. then you have to purposely get healthy. <laughs> That's yeah. such a mind fuck. <laughs> so for those of you scrolling through social media, and seeing all these beautiful bodies that you want to look like, understand they don't look like that every single day of their life. No. Mm -mm. Right? Yeah. It's short amount of time, probably heavily filtered, perfect lighting. There's a lot that goes into what we're seeing. Yeah. And it's fucking with people's heads. And again, with the competition, I think uh, some people will start to look at their competition. I'm sorry, but you do not know what that person's going to look like until you are standing next to them yeah. on stage. I tell my girls that all the time. Don't get caught up in thinking you're not ready or this person looks like that because there's been so many times where I get up on stage and I'm like, I thought that person was way leaner on Instagram and I'm I'm leaner. Yeah. Yeah. They could have had a bad night's sleep the night before. Yeah. Their plane could have got delayed and they're stressed out. You have no idea who's showing up that day. Nope. You really don't. And bodies can change overnight like that, right? Like yep. that's what we were talking about peak week. Mm -hmm. Well, things can happen overnight real fast yep. depending what they did. What was your best look ever in your eyes? <laughs> of course, the last I, one. I know my answer. Yeah. Vancouver was, <laughs> you know, I had literally dieted for almost a, 
a full year almost, you know, from, from December to July and I uh, finally nailed it. You know, I think, uh, I had an awesome posing routine for stage. I finally, after three shows, a lot of my stage nerves were out. I knew that that was going to be my last show of the year. So I kind of went into it with that, like, yeah. I'm just here to have fun. And it was a smaller show. There was only like eight girls and I got fifth. So uh, being in the IFBB, you do not get to go home with a trophy unless you're with the top five. So I was just like, oh my gosh, like I get to end my pro year with um, something to take home. Yeah. You know, I don't want participation or you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want a trophy really. like that. But yeah. like, it was nice to know that I, I just made it enough to get a tiara and a, and a little plate to take home and uh, hang that up. And I had awesome pictures and um, I had an awesome Airbnb. I love Canada, by the way. Yeah. If anyone ever wants to go to Canada, it's great yeah, up there. It's great. Uh, so I don't know. I, I had a great <clears throat> time and it was a good look. Go to her Instagram <laughs> and look for the pictures from that Vancouver <laughs> show. You were in like a pinkish purple. Yeah, suit. that was my coach's suit, which was I mean, awesome. You look insane. Yeah. And that's actually, I think, the picture I, I used for your uh, like upcoming guests. <laughs> Yes, I was it like, was. I don't it think I'm going to use this black one. background. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, that was a an awesome show. Um, and it was like, I got there a week early too because I always have a lot of travel stress, and obviously stress and traveling can change your look. I got there early, and it was the first time I think I got off a plane and was like, "Wow, I look great." Yeah. First time I like didn't look like crap. I don't know like what was going through my head or whatever at that time. Um, but yeah, I just. I think it was just all about stress management during yeah. that trip. It really was. I was in a Airbnb all by myself. I did like yoga. I just really just would watch things that were relaxing. I tried to not, I didn't even want to watch like bodybuilding stuff during that time because again, it was just Start too overstimulating. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when it came down to it, like we mentioned before, stress management is everything. I remember when I was doing my show prep, I had to go out of town for a soccer tournament one weekend. It it was tr from here to Edinburgh, which is two and a half hour drive, not far, right? But we were staying in a college dorm room. It's a different bed, different schedule. I never missed a meal. I swear I've never missed a meal. I gained two pounds between those two check-ins and I was freaking out. I'm like the coaches and I think I was binging and eating pizza at this soccer tournament. This was just from the stress of the trip and the sleep two pounds. Right. But yeah, that's just proof of it how is. stress can kill. And I have a lot of clients that, you know, I'm not losing any weight. Well, you went through a hell week. Yeah. I, and so it don't worry about head. the scale at that point. Oh, and my, my coach would tell you anytime, if you don't get enough sleep, you're not working out. There's no point. Your and body you know can't many, handle it. So many people will be like, I'm going to work out anyway, because that's it. my stress reliever. And I'm like, that's awesome. But guess what? <clears throat> Your body don't care if you're like trying to fight through stress because you enjoy it. Your body is literally in flight or flight. And it's like, you did not sleep. I don't have the energy for this. And now you're forcing me to have energy for this. I'm going to be inflamed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's your opinion on working out while you're sick? Oh, why? <laughs> oh, because th that makes your illness go away. No, right? it makes hey, it worse. Get your sick ass out of the gym. Go I get don't want to be near you. Yeah. And to your point about the sleep thing, if your body is trying to recover from an illness, how do you expect to recover from a workout? And how do you think your workout is going to handle your body's ability to recover? It doesn't work like that. If you're, there is... There's a coach that I used to follow, mm -hmm. I stopped following, that made a post saying, the only excuse for not showing up as at the gym is if you have a fever. <laughs> Any other sickness, get yeah. your ass to the gym. Or if you're it's a, like or below you're, your head yeah. or above your head or something like I'm that. Like, yeah. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> disagree. I've heard that before. Strongly yeah. disagree. Nope. I think that you, your body will best recover when you're sleeping, right? Yep. And that goes for when you're sick or when you're trying to recover from a workout. So you are better off if you want to speed, if you want to get back in the gym as soon as possible, go to bed. <laughs> yeah. And I think people think that all of the progress is being made while you're in the gym. Oh, no. It's mm -hmm. not. It's when you're fueling your body and recovering.
Right. Right. Yes. That's 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 where the the progress comes in. Yeah, the gym forty five minutes an hour break down those muscle fibers, then the work starts. I eye roll just the amount of people. I go back to the steroids right there. Like if you use steroids, then it makes it makes you stronger, like right? You get a pump. They yeah. always think it's like all this like gym stuff, and I'm like, it literally makes me sleep. Really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's how I grow because HGH helps you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like you just you ha- they all have it wrong. Just go to bed. <laughs> How funny would it be to see like a bottle of NyQuil like with like infused with HGH? Yeah. <laughs> because it's literally like they think it's so cool and does all this magical stuff and I'm like cuz that's just, when your growth like, hormone secreted. It's yes. when you're sleeping. It's literally like train hard but recover harder. It yeah. is so true and yeah. I just I think uh, we we just have this culture of let's do the most. Well, guess what? I mean, and life's not a math problem either. You can't just like eat a bunch of calories and then go burn it off with one cardio session. Like all the people that try to like do burn it off after a cheat meal. Yeah, it's like it's it's not like oh math like add some and then to to create your body doesn't work that way. It no. wasn't like oh <laughs> that Easter ham. Let's just delete that. Yeah, <laughs> and do you know how much cardio you need to do? To burn off like a, a a McDonald's like combo meal, dumb. Like hours, dumb, <laughs> dumb. Just and like chill out. And that's the problem. Like people people go to the gym, and I I admire everyone who walks into a gym and puts some work in. Yeah. What do you do when you leave though? That's what really matters. Yeah, all the things outside of the gym. When you right? walk out that door after your workout, what are you doing? Because that 45 to an hour minute session or your little stroll on the treadmill or your little bike ride while you're, that's not going to erase what you're about to do to yourself No, when you walk out that door or that weekend. or And people really think the stuff outside of the gym's boring, right? Like the cooking and eating. I'm telling you that yoga and mobility that they're not doing is also important. The sleep management, stress management. It's... All of those things, it's just like, and and if you look at the pro bodybuilders, they don't really show all that stuff. No. And they're all doing it. Yeah. They're all like getting their deep tissue massage work probably more often than you because they can afford it, especially if they're high ranking. Um, And then they get some of their meals shipped to them if they're sponsored by these meal companies. So they are literally saving all this time so that they can sit and recover. Yeah. And they're not going to film that. Yeah, here's just me yeah. lounging. <laughs> here's me stretching for an yeah. hour. And guys and girls, all of these aspects go into any fitness journey. This isn't the extremes for bodybuilding. Yeah. This goes for anything. If you're trying to be healthier, you need to rest. You need to have low stress. You need to monitor what you're eating. It's, it's no different. It's yeah. to a more extreme level in bodybuilding. Yes. Bodybuilding is extreme. And you do not have to uh, compete on a stage and be a, a good, like, fitness bodybuilder. Right. You know, you can do all the bodybuilding things but not step on stage, too, because right. bodybuilding is really expensive, by the way. Yeah. Well, especially for women. Yeah. Right? Yep. I mean, all the makeup and the tan. And when you're a pro, it just gets even more expensive. Because even if I don't have to pay for a show entry anymore, you still got to pay like 300 something bucks for your IFBB pro card every year to compete. And then, you know, there's only one pro show in, in your area. Maybe Yeah. most of us are going to have to travel. I mean, I did Pittsburgh, Toronto, and Vancouver. Imagine all that travel expense alone, just travel, not the tan and the makeup, like everything else I said that goes into the show as well. And again, I work a full-time job and multiple others. And again, when I mentioned about not having kids, I, I don't know how people do it. Yeah. And most pro bodybuilders aren't making their living off of the competition in the prize money. They're making their living off of endorsements and sponsorships and all that other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why the IFBB will always tell you, like, we are literally – just like a marketing for you to like you it's like going getting a degree right yeah here's my degree okay well go do something with it right Mm -hmm. here's your ifbb pro card okay go do something with it whether that's 
doing the posing business or you know being a coach it just adds on to your resume right i'm a pro bodybuilder that sure looks nice on a resume and i oh, sure yeah. don't it so again <laughs> you have to make your money you know you can use them to make your money in your business uh but they're just they're just like sitting there like yeah you can keep giving us money to show up on stage oh yeah registration fees and all of that your annual renewals for your membership yeah yes Oh, yeah. And it seems to keep going up every year, too. Mm -hmm. So it's not getting cheaper, guys. And again, gear's not cheap. Food's not cheap anymore. So, And those are the things that you're going to be paying for uh, also on top of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, Paige. You know what time it is. All right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> when the drinks move. Yeah, we got to clear <laughs> these the table. Move? Okay. Where do these go? So I'm going to... Because yeah, I'm going to ask you a question, as you know. Okay. And I want to be able to hear your response. All right. Okay. I was, I've been looking forward to this. Oh, man. I don't have grip strength. Okay. Let's go. All right. You start whenever you're ready. Okay. What are some negative side effects that you've seen with steroid use? Oh, like uh, some hair growth? Hair growth? A little bit. Yeah? Yeah, but it's hard to say because like, sometimes you're wondering about PCOS. All right, we're good. <laughs> were you trying? I couldn't tell. <laughs> you could have. I was going not full frost. I was being a gentleman. I like how it was like under pressure, like side effects. And I'm like, well, there was hair growth. That was about it, though, good. for me. Um, and again, it, it's hard because I'm hot, half Hispanic. So I'm like, am I just getting older? Because Hispanic women grow hair. So I'm like, yeah. is it? I don't know. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So you're, you're pretty safe with yeah. your usage. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I never had like the, um, like a lot of girls are always concerned about like, you know, the vagina changes and stuff. And I never had any of that. Uh, and then like I had mentioned with Winstrol, that was probably the most I saw a voice change. Um, and I never took any testosterone. So I don't really know what that could have done. I think um, uh, I also like um, came off of birth control in 2019. And that, that was because I was about to already start manipulating my hormones with yeah, the steroids. Right. So why take a birth control? And like, it's just, that's not smart. Yeah. It's not a good time. So after that, I didn't even have a menstrual cycle for like, uh, you know, five years or whatever, maybe six. Wow. You know? Right. The only time was medical induced. So never even had one of those for a while. Just got that back now that I've been off of everything and back at like a so your, your body promo. is kind of like resetting. Oh, it's great. It's it's becoming healthier from the inside out now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely becoming more of a woman. Because in bodybuilding, for us females, you're not meant to be like that. Sorry. Like it feels good to be a strong woman, right? But when you take it to the extremes of bodybuilding and you're trying to literally have no body fat on you, that's not how women are supposed to be built. So um after doing year after year, like and pushing and stress, you know, that's, you know, uh, obviously women are supposed to make babies. You can't have a baby when you're under stressed. So why have a period? Because yeah. you're clearly like, I don't want to say I'm not a woman, but you're pretty much not acting like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because your female hormones are essentially non-existent. Right. Yeah. Right. You brought this up. So I'm going to ask you to give more detail about it. Sure. Vagina changes with yeah. steroid use. Mm-hmm. Some Meaning, guys like it, I guess. I don't know. That's what I've heard. What happens to oh, it? Just the uh, the clitoris gets enlarged okay. and inflamed. Like I know some girls will see it with uh, Anavar. It will get really um, kind of swollen, okay. which then makes it more sensitive, right? So then you've got like that issue going on there. And that's just because it's like a, an androgen that's just kind of like kind of making your free test go a little higher. It's not really that you're taking testosterone. It's just making your natural test kind of do some like higher elevated things. Got it. This yeah. is going to sound weird, but this conversation actually came up with my girlfriend Marie and I the other day. Oh, okay. We were talking about females and steroid use. Yeah. And I said, yeah, it makes their clit bigger. And she was like, does it? I said, yeah. Yeah. Like a little thumb. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I said, it's not like I, I had a feeling that, that's what happened but mm -hmm. I, but hearing it from you kind of like confirms that that is a real thing i think you have to take a big amount got it uh and again some girls end up accidentally taking 
actual testosterone. I never had that. But that does happen because, again, uh, steroids aren't cheap and sometimes people try to fake it and some girls are just naive and they don't know what they're dabbling with. And you could be taking test all you know, and then that's if you're taking too much of it, that's where you're going to see those kind of changes happen. You literally have to start taking the amount that probably a trans person would want or – you, you know what I'm getting yes, at? It's to a bigger really dose. change their body. Yeah, and it could be a genetic thing too. What if some people, some females, just genetically have more tests than others? Sure. So imagine if you already just genetically have high tests, and then you start dabbling with the steroids that can add on to that. They might see more side effects differently than other. That's another thing with steroids. What happens to like what someone takes could be different from the next. Depends yeah. on their genetic makeup as well and the quality that, and the amount. All good points. Right. All right. You said the words fake it. Yeah. So I want to ask you, who, what, what is your opinion on these influencers <laughs> that claim that they're natural? Oh, well, uh, some of them cannot, depending on who their sponsor or something is, they have to be careful with what they share because it could affect their, you know, who pays them, yeah, right? It, so, it affects their image. Yeah, right. And you have to – I do understand in that case. It, it does suck for some of these people with, you know, a higher, uh, you know, view count or whatever sure. that they have to be a little more careful with <clears throat> what they share in their words to protect their professionalism. Yeah, I think the whole Liver King story kind of broke open the whole yeah. topic, right? Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the first instances where s someone was actually busted mm -hmm. and they had to confess to their fans that they're a liar. Yeah. And it was like, it like stressed me out, like watching that whole thing, like where he's like talking to his fan yeah, base. You're like, and, I told you so. Yeah. Right. But it's like, we, we knew it. Yeah. But we just had to hear you say it. Right. But like Mike O'Hearn. Yeah. Dana Lynn Bailey. Does she claim not natural? Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Rock. Right. Like, come on. Yeah. You're 50 some years old. You carry 8% body fat and you're 260 pounds of muscle. You have so much money. You can buy the best that come drugs can buy. on. Yeah. But to your point, they have to protect their image. Right. Believe me, because The Rock has wanted to pretty much sponsor bodybuilding shows and the IFBB. But if he does that, it's kind of like his money's going towards a non-tested federation. What does that say mm -hmm. about him? Um, and again, it's just it's who he is. He has could affect his acting roles. It could affect yeah. so many things, and it's not worth it if it's going to cost him billions. Right. But to that point, yeah, the fact that. They're likely not natural. Doesn't make them bad people. No. They have an image to uphold, yeah. a physical appearance to uphold. Mm -hmm. The Rock's not getting certain movie gigs if he's 180 pounds. Right. And just so you're clear, there's not just The Rock. There's other actors that have to superhero roles for one. To get ready for those roles. Yes. They're going on cycles of steroids. And they don't need to look like ginormous bodybuilders, but they definitely want to look a certain six-pack way. Yep. I mean, Zac Efron has said that he's taken diuretics for shows. Bodybuilders use diuretics to get ready for a show to look crispy. He took diuretics for Baywatch. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, like, that's like my whole point is there's these kids and these teenagers and these highly influence, influential – Influ influenceable. Don't worry, I know. I Thank spit you. my words out to people <laughs> that are seeing all these stars and they're showing their Hugh Jackman workout to look like the Wolverine. You really think that that workout routine he did made him look like that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Oh, and I it's know. Such, I, I feel bad for these kids that believe it or the, oh, these, sure. these adults that believe it, that oh. I'm going to do this 12 week program and I'm going to look like Captain America. Oh, well, I know people that go to like just regular like planet fitness gyms that literally are just gen pop and they take gear to look good for the beach. <laughs> they are taking steroids to look good for their beach vacation. So they'll do this like mini cut. You know, yeah, it's not super strict, but they're still dieting and they're taking these steroids to look good for the beach. Then they go to the beach and then they just 
binge food and alcohol. Like, blow up like a balloon? Yeah, because here's the thing. Like, all of that is just stress on the digestive system again. Uh, booze is going to cause water weight and stress. And then you're taking gear, which is supposed to help you with recovery. And most of it makes you hold water. Uh, you're going to look like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> so all that hard work for the beach. And Day you're one leave. looked amazing. Day two. What the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah. Just like, and then in my mind, if you're going to take steroids and take that risk on your health, you're doing that for the beach. I know. Like I understand for bodybuilding at the high level, you're trying to win like thousands of dollars at a pro show if you're first, second, or third. But the beach. <laughs> oh, we, we could probably be talk for like three more hours, Paige. I know. About we could the rant. whole like body image thing. and uh, Yeah, and I feel bad. I, I do uh, because yeah. no one's perfect. And I think you should do what makes you happy. And I understand that there are many things in life like smoking cigarettes and drinking and and, and steroids, you know, that's what my parent, like my parents know that I took stuff and they always knew that I had a coach who helped me do it responsibly. So they trusted that they knew that I got my blood work. Uh, obviously I, I really do think the stroke was something I couldn't have prevented. I did everything I could have. Yeah. I just stressed myself out yeah. way too You can bad. only take so much. Yeah. And again, like, I think you have to have a good communication with what you're doing and a reason. Uh, but some people are just a little bit more risky than others. And that's just how it's always going to go, right? And you yeah. try to preach, do it right, do it safe. But you can't help everybody. <laughs> no, you can't. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could keep talking, but, you know, I think we're going to try to wrap things up here. So this is this is your stage page. Oh, yeah. What do you want to promote? Like, what do you... What do you want to do for society? What can you help people with? And mm -hmm. you say you're a posing coach. Yeah. You're looking for new clients? Oh, yeah. Posing, I do uh, virtual and in person. So I uh, honestly, it's pretty half and half right now. It's been great. I definitely see that even now that I'm people know that I'm not really competing right now with everything going on. I have had nothing but support. And a lot of people do want my uh, advice. I think what happens too, and I'm sure you get this from being a, a coach yourself, is people are pretty much hiring you for your personality. And I think people really gravitate me for the positivity that I can give and confidence I can help them build with posing. Cause I do, I think that a stage presentation means so much. You can work hard in the gym and do all the things. And obviously us ladies have to have a little bit more sex appeal than you guys. So I have to bring a little bit of sass to some of these Tom girl, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're just like these tomboys, and I have to be like, Hey, let's throw on some heels and shake they, yeah, your ass. They can't even walk in heels. I know. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, move your hips. And they're like, what? Huh? Like, <laughs> so, so it's, a, it's a process. I've but seen the practice, progression. Yes. Yeah. I, it takes a little bit because being someone, I was very natural with it. And then I'm trying to, it's all about confidence. Yeah. I'm like, girl, get up on that stage and act like you won the show. Act like you just, you know, won already. And that the judges are, it, this is your show, right? You just told me it's my stage. Have fun. Yeah. Go have fun on that stage. Act like, you know, screw these other girls. This is my time. Yeah. The judges are looking at you. You got to demand the attention. And again, like get some good pictures. You're getting up there on stage. They're going to take pictures of you. Mm -hmm. Get some good poses and some good pictures. Put on that social media. We know what we're going to do up there. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm doing posing right now. So that's where I'm at with that. What uh, divisions are you assisting with? Just bikini and figure right okay. now. I do have, um, I do know someone that does some wellness. I think, honestly, my my future goal with posing, I'd love to dabble with men. I would like to do some men's physique and classic moving forward. So I am going to start helping a few guys that I know, just kind of helping them hit some poses. I love bodybuilding. I'm still going to the shows. Yeah. I still listen to the podcasts and even men I, I like to watch all of those routines and i'm doing npc and ocb okay. and ifbb so i'm helping uh those federations right now i do understand what the requirements are for those divisions and uh federations because they are a little there's a little difference yes, there's a little intricacies with each yes. of what how your toe should be pointed or yeah where your fun. hand should be on your hip it's it's crazy i know i feel like i'm playing barbie like put yeah. your hand here and then i like <laughs> You know, move the elbow and, here. And, 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 yep, yep yeah. that's pretty much what's yeah, going the, on. You're, yeah, physically placing them where, where they should be. Oh, and I think it's so much fun to just mentally get in their head and just be that voice and be like, 
is your low back like screaming because you ain't arching enough or you ain't flexing here and and i'll be like well you your upper body looks good but what's going on with that lower half you you're forget, not squeezing get this <laughs> yeah dig your heels in or yeah yep. yeah posing is an art it is and, and like you work. said you can put all the time in the gym but if you can't showcase your body you've you've kind of wasted your time yeah and you cannot come to me last minute and say that you're doing a show in three weeks or a month <laughs> don't you hear that <laughs> you give her time don't. she needs time to learn your body don't work that way no. i can only i can only do so much with someone in one or two sessions because you got your mandatories mm -hmm. you got your individual routine and then you've got these like transitions and these like polish pieces you have to work on uh and then you got to like get do it start doing it naturally right and yeah. I always start from the feet up. Yep. So what are your feet doing? And then once you figure that out, well, what's going on with your hands? So sometimes it's just, I don't know anybody that can like get it down in one or two sessions. So definitely, I mean, I get girls that come to me in their off season, right? Yeah, yeah you might be fluffy <clears throat> and you might not look anywhere near you will for stage, but we got to start working still on the those. same poses. Yep, still Whether the same look. poses, still the fluidity, get comfortable, get in tune with your body. It's one of those, you and bodybuilding will make you so aware of how you feel how your body moves yeah. how things work and the mechanics and i know that being that i've helped some of your girls with posing it goes even towards the exercises right how many times are you doing an exercise with your posing client or your clients and relating it back to posing hyper extensions yes hyper extensions and go past down. where you normally would for your workout and hold that get your lower back screaming while right. holding weight that way when you're doing it on stage as a pose it's yep. almost easy. Yep. You're right? building that strength. And then don't forget about that mobility Yep, out of the gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, you are my exclusive posing coach for my female competitors. And that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. you've done a great job with them. Thanks. And I'm going to continue sending people to you. I want the coach to be happy too, right? Like these are, you know, I'm just kind of a piece to the puzzle to help them, but you're the one doing their workouts and nutrition. That's very important and i'm just kind of doing the glitter yeah that's what i call myself i i'm like that <laughs> glitter maker make them little just sneak. come in and sprinkle the fairy yep. dust and walk away yeah and then you get to see it in check-ins so i'm like hey your check-ins looking better because yeah. you know that's a part of the posing too you should see that those little changes and check-ins and um makes me feel good the coach is happy the clients are happy and then you're creating this Beautiful, fine artwork. I'm more of a team player, right? Like I like, I know that bodybuilding is an individual sport, but at the end of the day, like I like collaborating with people. Yeah. That's my thing. Well, Take Paige, it. it's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks. For I, I could keep talking. Like I know. bodybuilding is like a passion <laughs> of mine too. And I mean, I could just keep going and going, but you know, the camera's probably going to shut off at some point. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, I figured. Yeah. Well, do you have any questions for me before we wrap up? No, I want to thank you for giving me your posing clients or I'm so, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your clients, yeah. you know, and working and having me here. This is great. I yeah. love, I don't shut up. I like to talk <laughs> and uh, that's what a podcast is all about. Oh, for sure. And I hope the you know, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I do have a YouTube channel. If anybody wants to, I did used to vlog a lot. So I have a lot of my pro debut and my pro card win documented. If anybody wants to see a prep through that's on my page to be your YouTube channel. Page to Beedra is my Instagram account for following me on there. Yep. Uh, and you can just DM me for posing on there as well. It's just the easiest. I'm always on Instagram. So that's that's pretty much it. You can find everything you need to know and reach out because I'm will. i an open book. I can answer anything. Yeah, you do post a lot on social media as far as like glimpse into your life. You're, yeah. very, you're very open and transparent about things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and I'll link all of your your media sources in the video so people can find you easier. Yeah. But it was awesome to have you on. Thanks. I learned a lot fun. about you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, get out. <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome, Paige. All right. Thanks. All right. And I will see you on the next episode of Barbells and Bourbon. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>